Hello, everyone. So, in the first episode, I promised you that if we were able to beat Doom 4 on Nightmare difficulty, I'd share with you the crazy keyboard and mouse setup that made it possible for me. And so, here we are. This is how I set up my keyboard and mouse to make a game like this accessible to a person with a disability like me. <laughs> well, I won't scare you with the gory details, but I've got some issues with my hands that make it impossible for me to use traditional key bindings. Um, the solution that I've come up with is to bind the majority of the game's functionality onto my mouse, leaving me to deal with the WASDA keys and the spacebar as best I can with my left hand, uh, which is worse. But that's right, the entirety of my keyboard usage comes down to this, which leaves every other game function shoved onto the mouse. Uh, but I think I've made it work. Except, <laughs> well, now you know why my jumping is so terrible. Uh, but before we look at the mouse, um, let's take a look at the remaining keyboard bindings. Even though I only use WASDA and Spacebar with my left, uh, the other game functions still need to be bound to the keyboard keys so that we can set up the mouse to trigger those key presses. As you can see, there's, well, there's no magic here. The game functions are bound to keyboard keys, and since those keys will be triggered by the mouse and not your hand, it really doesn't matter what key goes to what for right now. However, I do have two tips to consider when you're assigning these. First, you'll notice that I've assigned keys like K and L, and P, these are keys on the right side of the keyboard. Um, sometimes I even go farther away and I'll use the number pad and the special keys surrounding it. Um, why? Well, it keeps those functions away from the keys I might accidentally press with my left hand while it's flailing about like a drunken chihuahua, which is most of the time when I'm playing. Uh, second, you may want to consider some kind of special moniker or heuristic when you're assigning these keys. That's going to make it easier for you to remember them so you don't have to alt-tab and go digging into menus as much when you want to make a change down the road. What I've used here is just simple word association. I have K here for crouch, I have P here for swap, weapon mod, and so on. Uh, you could just write them down too, but <laughs> writing. <laughs> At any rate, Using the default key bindings or the new ones you've made up, uh, whatever, it's time to assign them to the mouse. So, at this point, it comes down to a matter of preference. Now, I've got six thumb keys on my Logitech G602 mouse. Some mice have more or less. For instance, the 600 has 12 thumb buttons. Some have even more than that. Um, but I've tried those, and for me personally, the buttons are too small or too close, and I end up having problems with them. Um, I have numbness and loss of tactile sensation, so I can't tell the difference between the keys when they're that close together, and I, I just can't use them. The six thumb buttons on the G602 seem to work the best for me. So, you know, you work with what you've got. The basic method of assignment is easy. Uh, you either drag a command from the left list onto a mouse button, uh, or you simply click on the mouse button itself, click assign new command or edit command, and then you just add one of your Doom key bindings and give it a name. And then from now on, when you hit that mouse button, Doom Guy does his thing. Uh, but, with only six buttons available, sometimes hard choices have to be made. A mission is an option. Don't think it's not. Many games can be beaten without certain functionality or features. For instance, you can see that Crouch is on a really inaccessible key for me, but that's because I only really need it in a few sections of the game. Um, and I never even bound the swap weapon mod button. Uh, I use the same mods throughout the entire game, so don't be afraid to, to be really frugal with your assignments. Um, you can see what I have here. Um, the weapon wheel, uh, which avoids having to use the number keys to select a specific weapon or the scroll wheel to scroll through them. Chainsaw, grenades, BFG, change grenade type, and glory and use. Now, I'm sure you're wondering why or how I have two functions on the same button, uh, but I do this a lot, and I call it uh, cohabitation. Um, when you're out of buttons and a mission isn't looking especially desirable, you have to consider whether you can place two functions on the same button press. In this case, pressing this mouse button triggers two distinct keystrokes. Q, which is melee attack as well as glory kill when a demon is staggered, and E, which is the key for use slash activate. Essentially, that opens doors and such. But what it means is that sometimes it looks like I punch a door instead of opening it immediately, but essentially it's because I'm pressing two keys with the same button, two functions, separate and distinct. Um, and they work fine living together on the same mouse button. So that's it. Um, this is how I have mine set up. I encourage you to think about both a mission and cohabitation when you're setting up games in the future. Um, this is how I have mine set up, but obviously there's many other options 
and many other things that you can do. If you have questions about this setup, or using the Logitech gaming software, or you want to hear about how I have other games set up, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, we can try and make a video for that. Until then, I've been Sneaky. This has been Tapping That Sass and my accessibility slash disability setup for Doom 4. See you next time.